This production is brought to you by UBC Global, a global ministry network. UBCglobal.org. Today we want to, this is our theme, by the way, the sanctuary cleansed, vindicating God's character. And I sense already a straight line in the presentations from last night, even up to Elder Murray's presentation, even the songs that were brought to us. God is going to do something explosive. Make sure that when it happens, that you're on the right side of this explosion. Praise the Lord. Amen. God, I, I'm, I'm, I'm promising God is going to do something special for you. But you need to be on the right side of this equation. Amen. But today we want to, from tomorrow, please God, in the series that I have, which is final justification. From tomorrow, we will start looking at the themes of final justification. But today... We just want to take our minds away from this world. Praise the Lord, brethren. You want, you want to go that journey with me for a little while? Just to take your minds away from here and prepare. So you want to get a glimpse of glory. Because the Bible says, now we see through a glass darkly. Is that true? Things doesn't look very, very good. So we want to get a glimpse of glory. We move our minds away. But just a side, a sidebar. I want to lay this burden upon us just before we pray. And Sandy re re related this text. Two years after the children of Israel left Egypt, the Lord said this in the book of Deuteronomy, which is really a recount of the, of the whole idea of the Exodus movement. It says, The Lord God spoke unto us in Horeb, saying, Ye have dwelt long enough in this month. Two years after leaving, and as a matter of fact, it was supposed to be an 11-day journey. Are we together? And two years after, the Lord in his mercy said, you have dwelt here long enough. Do we feel that you have dwelt here long enough, brethren? Amen? Behold, I have set the land before. The Lord did not say to go and see if the land is there. He said, I have set it before you. Go in and possess the land, which the Lord swear unto our fathers. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give unto them and to their seed after them. 38 years later, are we together? 38 years later, the Lord again says, or Moses recounting said, and we come past Mount Seir many days. So you know what was happening? They were just going around the same place. So nobody can have tell them, but you know, we, we just passed this place. Are we together? They were just going around the same place. Do you feel like that is our situation today? And by the way, the parallel to Kadesh Barnea is 1888. Are we together, brother? The parallel to Kadesh Barnea is 1888. So the Lord says, and the Lord spake unto me, saying, We have come past the mountain long enough, turn you northward. But because God's mind wasn't upon a literal earthly Canaan, his north was heaven. Amen? Come on, people. Are we together with this? Yeah? It was heaven. So hence, we are here too long. It's time to go heaven. But we need a glimpse of glory. Pray with me as we Prepare. Father in heaven, we thank you for the themes that are coming through these messages from the time the camp began. And now, Lord, you, 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 have, you have brought us to a place where we, we want to get a glimpse of glory. Satisfy our souls. May this minister, this vessel of clay be turned to a vessel of honor so that your name will be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glimpse of glory. This is a profound statement. And stay with me because we're going to be happy and excited before we are finished. Even now, we're going to be excited. The Bible says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Amen. If only in this life you have hope. Another version says, if our hope in Christ is only for this life here on earth, then people should feel more sorry for us than for anyone else. <laughs> the 
but it's only by faith. Faith is the substance and the convincing. Praise the Lord. Faith is the substance and the convincing argument. That's what faith is, you know. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the King James Version says. But it is the evidence of things not seen. Faith is that. The contemporary English says it this way. Faith makes us sure of what we hope for and gives us proof of what we cannot see. Hallelujah. Another version says, faith is what, is what makes real the things we hope for. It is proof of what we cannot see. Do you have that type of faith? Do you have that type of faith? That you have it even though you don't see it? Come on, people, talk to me. It, it, you, you, don't, you can't feel it, but you know it is there because it's based on faith. Faith is the assurance that what we hope for will come about and the certainty that what we cannot see exists. Whoa! That's huge. By faith. Let's look at this. Before we look at that, let's look at what uh, Wagner says. Wagner says it this way. Christ and his righteousness, he says, if you should hear God say with an audible voice that you are his child, you would consider that sufficient witness. Well, he says, when God speaks in his word, it is the same as though, hallelujah, it is the same as though he spoke with an audible voice. And your faith is the evidence that you hear and believe. Come on, rejoice with me, brethren. This is, this is good news. Listen now. So we're going we're gonna to get a glimpse of glory. By faith. Abraham was the richest man in his time, we are told. He had a thousand people in his household. Praise the Lord. We are five and we complain he had a thousand. Come on, people. We, are, we have five. He had a thousand. Yeah, he had more room to him, right? <laughs> but he lived by faith. Hear you know what the word says? When he was called to go out, listen to this now, brethren. You want a glimpse of glory. You want to have the faith of Abraham. He sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country. Do you understand that? He sojourned in the land that the Lord called him to go to, but yet still it was a strange country. Why did he do that? For he looked for a city, praise God, which has foundations whose builder and maker is God. Anybody looking for that city here? Anybody now have their tete year loan? Come on, talk to me now. A certain year loan. If you have a certain year loan, you cannot be looking for that city. Listen, listen what Wagner says, the bottom statement. I forgot this one. Here, this now. All you have to do to believe is to believe. <laughs> Praise God. All you have to do to believe is to believe. These all died in faith. Hebrews 11 says, not having received the promises, confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. How are we this morning? How are we? Are you seeking? The, are you getting a glimpse of glory today? Moses. A simple message, you know, but it strikes to the heart. Moses, when he was come to years, he refused to be called. We don't know what that means. You know. We don't understand what that means. He refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. We don't know what that means. That's right. We don't know what that means. He refused to be called 
the child of the greatest man upon the planet. Pharaoh was not only king, but he was God. Or so he thought. Choosing rather, are we together? To suffer affliction, oh my God, with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. What he did, he esteemed the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. He forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured. I, see, I know the police that shook me here, but listen. You'll deal with that, all right? There's a, he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Come on, say amen, brethren, because he endured. He endured all the trials because he sought him who is invisible. Praise the Lord. We must see this by faith and hold on to it as if it is really in your hands. As a matter of fact, faith says it is in your hand already. You have it. Moses has had much to give up. Listen now. Moses was fitted to take the preeminence among the great of the earth. We are told in inspiration to shine in the courts of its most glorious kingdom and to sway the scepter of its power. Some of you are granted a little position on the work on, on our jobs. Come on, talk to me now. And because we get a little position on our job, we forget our God. God is in the business of cleansing the sanctuary. This work only happens once. His intellectual greatness distinguishes him above the great men of all ages. Yet, with the world before him, he had the moral strength, hallelujah, to refuse the flattering prospects of wealth and greatness and fame. Because, hallelujah, he saw him who was invisible. We need to get that glimpse of glory because we put a lot of value on earthly things, our jobs and all these things that we own. Listen, that is nothing. God has greater things in store for us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen, Paul now. Paul says this now. Anybody going through light affliction? Light. Light. For anybody light? <laughs> light afflictions? Like a brick falling on your foot? Our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Hallelujah. This moment is, could be long. Works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. What was Paul's light affliction? Here, what was Paul's light affliction? In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent. Light affliction, he says. In deaths, in deaths often, of the Jews, five times received thy forty stripes, save one. Light affliction. Thrice I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. They were <laughs> stoned. Stone. Three times I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. Light afflictions. Out in the ocean. A night and a day. And we here for a week and uh, for a uh, week. In journeyings often. In perils of waters. In perils of robbers. In perils by my own countrymen. In perils by the heathen. In the city, in the wilderness, in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, light afflictions, in fasting often, in cold and in nakedness. Put some ticks in Jamaica and light. Light afflictions. But you know what make Paul endure? Because he saw him who is invisible. Hear what Job said. Rejoice with me, brethren. Job says, for I know, hallelujah, that my Redeemer liveth. And that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Praise God. Brethren, that's faith. Though worms destroy this body, I will see my Redeemer. We need to keep hope alive. 
light affliction. The great God, even Christ, was tempted to give up. Hear what it says. Oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Oh, Father, he cried again, if this cup may not pass away from me except I drink it, thy will be done. Anybody, anybody ever felt like giving up? Talk to me very honestly. Yeah? I feel like giving up under these light afflictions, eh, Victoria? I feel like giving up. I feel like throwing in the trouble. I forget with this whole thing again. This is not, it's not real. But we need to have a glimpse of glory. We need to see it again. We need to open our eyes again and see that God, faith tells us that it is real. Christ got a glimpse of glory. Listen to this now. It says in Isaiah, after his suffering, this is from another version, he will see the light and he will be satisfied with what he experienced. Praise the Lord, brethren. The Lord says, my servant who always does what is right will make his people right with me. He will take away their sins. Christ went through because he saw, he saw you today. He saw us. And in Hebrews, as it comes to the end, says this. All of them pleased God because of their faith. But still, they died without being given what had been promised. Praise the Lord. This was because God had something, hallelujah, better in store for us. And he did not want them to reach the goal of their faith without us. Oh, brethren, brethren, rejoice. So they're actually waiting on us. Praise the Lord. God has something better for us, but they are waiting on us. But we have them waiting too. We have them waiting. We need to get the vision alive again. That there is something better to life than this. Amen, brethren. Do, do you find that there is, this is not it, you know? This is not it. Brethren, this is not it. God has something better in store for us. And as God is waiting to finish this final justification, and it is yours. It is ours. No comparison. Let's look at God's kingdom now as we seek to wind this up now and bring, make it make sense to us. Listen, Christ was asked, or, or Christ is saying this, we are on to now, I, I want us to get this point clearly because sometimes we think that there is something that resembles the kingdom of God. There is nothing on this earth that you could compare the kingdom of God with. Uh, have we together, brethren? They, they, all, all the fancy how we have gone into some big fancy houses and that doesn't compare with the idea of God's kingdom. We have men who own everything or so they think and that still doesn't compare with God's idea of his kingdom. Hear what it said. In Mark 4.30, the Bible says, Christ is speaking, whereunto will we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison, what Christ was really saying is that there is nothing, Christ was making a, looking at a, a purview of the world. And he was saying that there is nothing you could compare the kingdom of God with upon the earth. But, but then he says this. I, read this with me now. Praise God. But as it is written, nor neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Then we are told, God shall wipe away all tears. Praise God, brethren. We cry because we are, sometimes we don't see our brethren. Sometimes we don't see our loved ones walking here with us. But we need to see the invisible. God is going to wipe away all our tears. Amen? And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things. For the former things are passed away. But we need to get that glimpse right now. Because the frustrations of this world, the depressing situations that are all around us, if we do not keep our eyes single to that glimpse of glory, we will be tumbled over in a second. Is that the truth? 
The ransomed of the Lord, we are told, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return. Oh, hallelujah. And come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. We need to see this. We need to see it. No more pain. Amen? You look forward to that day? No more pain. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert. God has something better for us, people. Let's keep the hope alive. And this glimpse, this point is critically important. This glimpse is saving. Brethren, this glimpse is saving. John says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. This is the word of God to us. This glimpse keeps us alive. And every man that has this hope in him, purifies himself even as God is pure. Do you have that hope today? Do you, do you have that hope? As you have this hope of an eternal, glorious world, a glimpse of glory, that in itself is saving. Let's follow Christ by faith as we seek to make some, some, some statements here. Let's follow Christ by faith. It is those. Great controversy tells us, page 430. It is only those who by faith follow Jesus in the great work of atonement who receive the benefits of his mediation in their behalf. Listen to this carefully now as we look at the sanctuary truth as we go through the final justification. Let me read it again. It is only those who by faith follow Jesus in the great work of the atonement who receive the benefits of his mediation in their behalf. But it doesn't stop there. It says this. All need a knowledge for themselves of the position and work of their great high priest. Why? Otherwise, it will be impossible for them to exercise the faith which is essential at this time or to occupy the position which God designed them to fill. Do you know where Christ is right now, my dear brethren? Do you know his position and his work? We talk about the glimpse of glory, but we need to know where Christ is. Solemn indeed. Every individual has a soul to save or to lose. Each has a case pending at the bar of God. Each must meet the great judge face to face. How important then that every mind contemplate often the solemn scene when the judgment shall sit and the book shall be opened. When with Daniel, every individual must stand in his lot at the end of the books. Solemn indeed. The glimpse of glory is predicated on the fact that we pass the judgment, that it is well with our soul. So we can have all these illustrious dreams and these glimpses of glory, but it is dependent on us getting to this final test. That is, that is, that is the theme of my subject and presentation. We are at a very critical period where God is cleansing the sanctuary. Are we together, brethren? God is doing a very special work. God is seeking to now make a number that has never been made before. And the people of God must not be caught at this time seeking to fill their own interests. Let Jerusalem come to mind again. Let Jerusalem come to mind. Let, let the thought come to us that God is depending seriously upon us to finish this work, to make an end of sin, and to bring in everlasting uh, righteousness. How solemn a, a thought to know that we are living in a special day when every soul should be gathered around the sanctuary. Every interest is only in the sanctuary, knowing the position and work of our high priest. But the people of God are seen involved in everything else except their salvation. Very serious time indeed. If Moses had all this glory before him, but he sought him as who was invisible. Abraham 
had all the wealth to build massive mansions, but he did not plant any roots upon the earth. He looked for a city which had foundations whose builder and maker is God. Are we putting off the coming of the Lord for some later time? Let me tell you this, we don't have, we don't have the luxury of that comfort because death could separate us from that dream. Are we together? You have all these illustrious plans for here, but death could separate you from that dream. A turn in the economy could make everything disappear. And how shall we stand? This is no time to be at ease. Amen, brethren? This is no time to be at ease. We have that presentation that we heard this morning. Babylon's intent is that there will never be a Jerusalem. We're going to prove that wrong. But what, 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 what we have to consider, will you be in the proven? That's the thought. By God's grace. So brethren, in the few remaining moments that we have, we're going to sing a song. I really deliberately wanted it to be short so that we could have our minds look at these things. Think of it again. We don't have much time here on this earth. This camp meeting started in 2002. We are in 17. Are we together? Great changes are taking place on our planet. Great changes are taking place. Satan is meeting with his confederates in secret while the people of God are having a good time as though we have all the time in the world. While heaven is a stir, the people of God are in confusion in Babylon. God is calling, out, calling us out of that confusion. But we need to see again by faith there are real promises in the word of God for you. Real promises. Put off that plan that you had. Put off that plan. I was talking to Ella Murray and he told me we were speaking about Nehemiah. Could you imagine in the time of Nehemiah when the people of God went and married all these infidel wives? And had children and set up groups. God said, listen, the children and their mothers must go. Could you imagine that? Was Ezra, right? Ezra, sorry. The, 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 the wives, could you imagine the pain of that ripping apart? But for them to be saved and to be appraised on the earth, it had to go. What are you holding on to today that is separating God from doing that mighty work in your life? What are you holding on to? Are you holding on to some imagination that you will die? That God will forget you? That if you make a sacrifice for God, all your money that you save for your life will be lost? What do you imagine against God? Your positioning that you hold, your time of retirement is coming and you're saying this lump sum that I'm getting, I have this great plan for it, really? Really? We make promises to God and when the money comes into hand, we forget God. Am I talking the truth? Let today be a new day for us. God is working in his sanctuary as proof that these things are real. The fact that Christ is in the sanctuary making atonement for us at this final hour is an evidence that all his promises are yea and in him they are amen. You want to sing this song that we sang? But what, 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 what I like about this time, though, as it is said in the prophets, that God is stretching his hand a second time to recover Israel. Whatever you would have messed up before, whatever plans that you have, you alone know what plans you have. But God is stretching his hand a second time to recover Israel. Do not let, praise the Lord, do not let this camp meeting leave you the same. It can't. Well, it can't because it's either you get worse or you, you head in a particular direction. This message was brought to you by UBC Global. For more presentations, stay tuned into ubcglobal.org.